Derek Chollet, thanks for joining me on Upfront. I spoke to a senior White House official not long ago who said, you'll miss us when we're gone. How much do you think Obama will be missed? How much do you think he'll be remembered as a transformative president, someone who changed uh, US foreign policy, America's role in the world for the better? versus how much you'll be remembered as a brief interlude, a footnote between the Bush and Trump eras? Well, I think he will be missed. And I think as time goes on, there will be even greater appreciation here in the United States and around the world for many of President Obama's accomplishments in foreign policy, whether it's his approach to international institutions, his efforts to address climate change, his embrace of diplomacy uh, to deal with threats like Iran's nuclear program. Uh, there are some many difficult parts of Obama's legacy that the next president will, will have to confront as well. I think many of those are more a testament to the difficulties of the problems themselves than any of Obama's policies. But this will be the test for history. You have written that Obama is all about the long game. He is a president, quote, less concerned with appearances and the whims of the moment, with more of an eye to long-term success. What long-term success will he leave behind in Syria? Well, it's very difficult to see. It's very difficult to see. I mean, what the U.S. has tried to do over the past several years is not solve the Syrian conflict. I think that's an illusion of our abilities to try to solve that conflict. But to try to mitigate the consequences, to try to contain it as best we can, to try to address what our direct security threats are within Syria, which is ISIL. So I think there's been some successes. There's been many failures. Uh, those of us who were involved in the making of Syria policy in the last five years don't look with any pride upon what Syria is today. Some successes, I think 1,300 tons of chemical weapons out of Syria is good for the world, good for us. But you know full well that there are plenty of people on both right and left who say Syria is not just a stain on the conscience of the world, it's a stain specifically on Obama's foreign policy record. They say he could have done more. He could have, for example, set up a no-fly zone to protect civilians as your former boss, Hillary Clinton, who you campaigned for to be president, as she called for on multiple occasions. It's, there's many things we could have done, and, and the challenge for the United States when it comes to a problem like Syria, when it comes to a problem like Russia or China and the South China Sea is usually not one of capability. U.S. military can do many things. The question is, will it actually have the impact we want it to have and what comes next? A no-fly zone, an issue that I studied very closely during my time at the Pentagon, certainly something the U.S. military is capable of doing. The U.S. military has been bombing Syria every day since September of 2014, hitting ISIL targets. But the question in the president's mind was, will a no-fly zone actually solve the problem we're trying to get at here in Syria? Wouldn't have protected he, was, he was not convinced. I don't think it would have. The air, it would have helped some civilians, but just as a no-fly zone didn't protect civilians on the ground in Libya, we didn't have a no-fly zone in Libya. We ended up having a no-drive zone where we had to bomb ground targets, not just air targets. Uh, and we saw what happened there. Uh, and I think that lesson is also foremost in many of our minds when it comes to U.S. intervention in Syria, the Libya lesson. So you have no regrets on not taking the extra oh, steps no, I have that your critics, no, specifically on the extra steps in terms of extra weapons to the rebels, a no-fly zone, bombing of Assad airports or jets, there, et cetera, et cetera. There are many things, as I've looked back, that the U.S. could have done differently. What's uh, the top one? I think we clearly could have supported the Syrian opposition six months earlier than we actually did when this original debate started. That said, looking back, I can't say that that would have been the decisive difference in making the Syrian opposition stronger against Assad. Your former colleague, Frederick Hoff, who was an Obama State Department advisor on Syria, has not only described Obama as a failed president because of Syria, but has claimed that the administration's policy towards Syria and Assad rests on its desire to accommodate Iran, basically to ensure that the Iran nuclear deal stays intact. Mm -hmm. He has a point, doesn't he? Why not just say out loud what everyone's thinking? No, I totally disagree with that. I don't think there's any evidence of that, despite what former colleagues may assert. Uh, I think the, the president has had a very tough policy against Iran. It was because of the combination of economic and military pressure that Iran was brought to the table and, and came to a deal on uh, limiting its nuclear program for the next 10 to 15 years. I don't see that in any way connected to any of the policy decisions on Syria. At least that's not my experience. Um, you said that Obama's decision not to enforce his own self-imposed red line on chemical weapons used by Syria's government, his decision not to bomb Assad in 2013, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and instead go for the inspections route, right. uh, uh, may have been, quote, inelegant or an ugly win, but the outcome made us all safer. Mm -hmm. That's not true, though, is it? It didn't make the people of East Aleppo safer. The UN has documented numerous instances of Assad in 2016 using chlorine gas mm -hmm. against civilians and rebels, mm -hmm. making a mockery mm -hmm. of your well, disarmament uh, deal, yeah. of the red line, of Obama. Yeah. 
of Obama's position. Again, 1,300 tons of chemical weapons are out of Syria today. It wasn't an inspection regime, it was an elimination regime. It's true that Assad uh, has, has terribly innovated the use of industrial chemicals like chlorine, which are banned as use, uh, to be yep. used as weapons, but were not weaponized at the time. I mean, chlorine is readily available anywhere. Uh, and so that was not part of that deal. Uh, now, I think when it, when it came to the red line and responding to the red line, and I was someone who was in the Pentagon who was planning and advocating for the use of force to implement the red line because we wanted to deter Assad from using chemical weapons and degrade his ability to use them further. We never imagined we could come to a deal to eliminate 1,300 tons of chemical weapons. So when that opportunity presented itself, we took it. So as someone who was advocating airstrikes in private at the time absolutely. within the Pentagon. And, pub and publicly with Capitol Hill, absolutely. But looking back, you actually think, no, the deal was still a better option. Oh, absolutely. Than, well, I, I despite all the people who have died since, I, despite the use of that, chemical weapons. That's a separate issue. The Syrians on the ground would say it's not a separate issue. In my view, the elimination of 1,300 tons of chemical weapons was the core U.S. national security interest. There's a separate issue about how we use military power to try to influence the dynamics of the Syrian civil war. That's a separate issue. Um, one particular policy that many would say has backfired, has undermined international law, undermined US standing in the world, Obama's own standing in the world, and has maybe created a whole new generation of anti-American fighters, are drone strikes, which Obama ramped up way beyond anything George Absolutely. W. Bush authorized, yep. Yep. with hundreds of civilians killed in places like Pakistan, uh, Yemen, uh, US citizens killed via drone, and overall, many would say, not much to show for it in terms of a reduction in uh, terrorism or terrorist groups, however you define mm -hmm. them. Well, that helps point up the paradox of Barack Obama, because to some critics, he's weak need, unwilling to use force, doesn't believe in American power, you know, doesn't pull the trigger. To other critics, he's the guy who's bombed more countries than George W. Bush, who's presided over this uh, global uh, drone campaign and deployed special operations forces in all these countries and killed a lot of people along the way. So there is this paradox. Yeah. He's hard to categorize often. No question that the use of drones has been one of the more controversial and difficult issues that President Obama's had to face. He's used them quite effectively, uh, tried very hard, I think, to uh, eliminate civilian casualties, understanding very well that the use of drones can often create uh, terrorists in some ways because of your alienating and, and angering many, many people. He's also mindful you can't kill your way out of the terrorist problem. So I think there's been a lot of success in disrupting terrorist networks. The former head of the CIA's counterterrorism center says, drones are creating more enemies mm -hmm. than we are removing from the battlefield. And a leaked CIA internal study found that drone strikes can, quote, increase support for insurgents, radicalize remaining leaders, and create a vacuum into which more radical groups can enter. That's sure, the they, they, they can do that. I mean, that's one of the dilemmas. You don't accept they have done that. In some instances, they have, certainly. I mean, they're That's not a failure. On the they're US not as well. a perfect tool. These are not perfect tools. So, why use it at something like nine times the rate of George W. Bush? Because the tool is becoming more sophisticated, it's becoming more prevalent. Uh, it's more available. But if it makes and, things worse on the ground. But I say that on balance, it doesn't. I mean, I think on balance, What's it's been a successful. What's your evidence saying on balance, it, it doesn't? The terrorists taken off the battlefields, no question. But if they're the, replaced the, by, the, so the, the Afghan the, Taliban leader was taken off the battlefield but, but, by the, a drone, his replacement is more extreme. Yeah, well no, done. No, no, no. I, I think actually on balance, this is a tool that Obama has used effectively. The question I'm for the- I'm asking for the evidence. For the, for the next, terrorists taken off the battlefield, leaders taken, there is no Even question. Even if experts are saying that the people who come along are worse, can. that it creates more. And again, more? I don't know the experts you're citing. Uh, the former head of the CIA who, Counterterrorism who, who, Center. Who? What, what era did he serve in? Who? Uh, in the George W. Bush era, yeah, Robert so, Grenier. Yeah, so there you go. So I don't, I don't know what experience he's got going over the so Obama drone the former drone head program. of the CIA Counterterrorism Center doesn't have an experience. No, I'm just saying, I don't, I, you know, what's his opinion versus my opinion? I'm saying it worked. He's saying it didn't. I'm asking for evidence. The CIA has done a what's study from 2009, which was leaked in 2014, which cites the ways in which it creates worse problems. Yeah, I haven't seen the study. And... Many, many I'll, I'll people in Yemen, in Pakistan, in the places where this happened, and many, are many, pointing this out. Many, many people in the current CIA today who've been presiding over this very difficult program will say it's worked. And I'm asking for the definition of worked. And all you're saying is taking people off the battlefield. Absolutely. Even though we see the number of terrorist groups defined by the U.S. State Department has gone up over Obama's watch. We've seen terrorist attacks go up. We've seen attacks in the U.S. On the U.S. territory uh, uh, go there's, up. There's no question. It's like it's working from There's no question this, the terrorist threat is evolving in a way that has been very difficult, and it's going to be very difficult for a generations. No question. 
And the, t the tools we have are getting more sophisticated, they're getting more precise, and they're getting more prevalent. So the question for President Obama is how do you best use those tools? Because you could not use them. You could say, this is a great capability that we've got available and we're not gonna use it. And there are many instances, by the way, where he doesn't take the shot. He's got the, he's got the target right there in the crosshairs and for a variety of reasons, maybe it's civilian casualties. Well, we don't know maybe that not... because one of the problems is there's been a huge lack of transparency but from this administration. More more. In fact, for the first half of them, we even say the word and, drone and in public. That's different now, though, today, right? President Obama... Yeah, but we're looking it, at his it, entire it, period. It, it was not transparent it's, for a huge it's, problem. It is, and even today, there are different is, rules for the CIA. It is very different today. It is very, and part of, part, part today. of what he has tried no, to do... No group that's looking at this thinks the United part States of, government of what is transparent on Part of what he has tried to do as he is leaving office is be more transparent than any president has been over this program for the precise reason knowing that his successor is going to inherit all these tools. Well, it's interesting you should say that because you've written in your book that President Obama leaves the U.S. in a sound position on the global stage and leaves the next U.S. president a legacy that will allow him to, quote, operate sensibly and pragmatically. That's one view. Derek Shelley. Another view, to quote Anthony Romero from the American Civil Liberties Union, is that, quote, Obama's failure to rein in George W. Bush's national security policies hands Donald Trump a fully loaded weapon. He's right, isn't he? Drone strikes, NSA surveillance, Absolute, night raids, yeah. military tribunals. That's all now in Trump's hands, and that's on Obama. Yeah, yeah. As he's his, given that to, with well, his blessing. I mean, he's, given, he's given Donald Trump a U.S. military that's second to none. Uh, he's given uh, Donald Trump... No, no, Trump come on, this is beyond military. We're talking no, about no, specific no, practices. No, I'm, look, He's given, he's given uh, Donald Trump a special operations uh, capability that is second to none in the world, that's got more capability and, and forces than ever before. Which lacks transparency, which can I, allow him to kill civilians. He's absolutely, he, there's more transparency today than there's ever been over these kinds of activities. And, and the, the precise this reason- This is the U.S. president who killed a U.S. citizen yeah, by a drone strike. Absolutely. Something yeah. George Bush didn't do. Yeah, this, and that there, power is now going to go to Trump. And, and, there's and been, people like absolutely. yourself, when you criticize Trump, he'll say, laugh at you and say, your president started all yeah, this. It, the, yeah, the, President Trump is inheriting a lot of power for the United States. He's inheriting a U.S. economy that's doing pretty good. That doesn't worry you. It worries me a lot. It worries so me. So that's on Obama, then. A lot of what Trump is going to do is going to be on Obama. No, no, no. He's just, going to use that, that, powers but, but that, that's, and that's precedents totally, that's, set up that's by that's a president. That's totally illogical. That's that, not illogical. That, no, how is it illogical? It's illogical because it basically say, because I don't know who my successor is going to be, I want to do the worst possible job I can so my successor doesn't inherit no, a No, what hand. you do is you say, I may be some noble guy who doesn't take the shot, but the next guy will, and yeah. therefore I need to introduce and, rules and, and controls. And, and that's, that, bingo, that's why he's been transparent. That is he exact, hasn't been transparent, that, Derek. Nobody agrees with the U.S. government's view of transparency so, and drones. Name to me a single group that's following drone strikes that thinks the U.S. government has been transparent. I, I think name he, an academic, name a human oh, rights group, oh, name a U.N. official. People who want the U.S. to be more transparent, but I believe that the efforts of President Obama as he's been leaving office, including just recently, where he has released a, a detailed uh, catalog of how these decisions get made, when they take drone strikes, when they don't, that's all in an effort, by the way, it's to be as transparent as one can be, so the successor can be judged by how the Obama administration's done it. That's you say the precise that, reason and yet doing many it. of your critics, as you know, academics, human rights activists, etc., point out, for example, Obama's failure, refusal to prosecute CIA torture mm -hmm. under Bush mm -hmm. now allows Donald Trump to bring it back much easier mm -hmm. than he would have been able to had Obama put people behind bars. Yeah, I don't... I don't you know, I think that actually it's going to be hard to bring back torture. There's other, other law that's come up since then, Supreme Court rulings including uh, that, that will make it hard to bring it back. But again, we're going to judge the, 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 the next president by the transparency Obama's leaving. Will Donald Trump be as transparent as Barack Obama on the use of drones? We'll see. Derek Shelley, thanks for joining me on Upfront. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Thanks for being on. Thanks.